welcome to episode 59 of the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa, and I am coming to you from Long Island, New York. I am officially in my new apartment. Um, it is very small, but I think I have a nice little setup right here. I've got all of my knitting books, and of course, I've got the rainbow order going on, which just makes me so happy. Um, so I thought I would try recording indoors today. I have this like really brief window of time before I have to go pick up Owen from the bus and take him to theater. So school started this week. Owen is in a brand new school and I'm not really sure how it's going so far. He's, you know, the days all of a sudden have gone from totally unstructured to a lot of stuff going on between school and theater and church choir and everything just starting up. So he's he's just really tired when he gets home. So I try not to I try not to push him too much and just let him offer me little bits of information as he feels ready. So, you know, hopefully hopefully it's going well for him. Um I've never had to go to a brand new school, so like in the middle of like switching grades in the middle of being at this same school. So I don't know, you know, that must be a little bit nerve wracking for him, but he makes friends pretty quickly. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully he is adjusting pretty well. But that means that um, I have more time now to do more regular podcasting. Um, this week I am finishing up um, at my job. I'm then I have a month break, so I'm not I'm not finishing up. I am still working, um, but the students go on tour for a month from mid mid September to mid October. So I'm gonna have the next month with a much more relaxed schedule, combined with Owen being back in school. So I am really excited that this episode is the start. I hope of weekly podcasts once again. So I know it's been it's been almost a month. I wasn't sure that I was even going to be able to record today. I had to go into work. I don't normally, it's Thursday. It is, what is it? It's September 8th. So normally I don't have to go into work on a Thursday, but today I did. And there's just some more administrative stuff that I had to deal with. So um, yeah, normally I will have more opportunities to podcast, but today I'm just kind of squeezing it in, in between getting home from work and having to go pick up Owen. So going to be kind of short today, but if I didn't record today, I wasn't going to have the opportunity. I'd like, I'd have to put it off for a whole other week, um, just with how the schedule is. So I figured a shorter episode today was better than no episodes since it's been a little while. So yeah, it's a beautiful day outside. It's it's finally starting to cool down a little bit here on Long Island. It was my birthday on Monday. I turned 44. Can't believe I'm 44. It's crazy. Um, so my birthday fell on Labor Day this year. So that was really nice because it meant my husband didn't have to work and I didn't have to work. And so we just had a really, really chill day at home. And it was the day before um, Owen had to start back up at school. So we just we just kind of chilled out. I had a pajama day. I didn't do anything special. I, I knit for a while, which was really nice. And and yeah, that was that was what I did for my birthday. We ate some yummy food. It was gonna be Thai, but Thai place was closed for Labor Day, which was kind of a bummer, but we did have some yummy dumplings instead that my husband took out and brought home to us. So that is um, my really brief uh, life update. Uh, so let's, now that we are five minutes into the podcast, let's actually get into the knitting. I am not wearing anything today. As I said, I just came from work, so we're gonna skip over the what am I wearing. Um, I don't really have any finished objects either. I have a half finished object, which is a sock. So I think let's go just into whips and I will go through them in order of like most finished to least finished. That seems good. So, all right, here we go, whips.
I am out of practice. I always forget to tell you guys where else you can find me until I'm already like into the recording. So I will have everything linked below this video, all the projects that I talk about today, you can find on my Ravelry page. And I will also put the pattern name and designer up on the screen in case you don't want to go all the way over to Ravelry, but you just want to know what it is. My Ravelry is Lisa Jack 78 and my Instagram is Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio. So I showed you guys last time this sock, which was not yet, I didn't have a heel yet. I think I had just started the heel flap. So this is the most finished of finished objects that I have is a hoe. It is a, one sock. So I still need to knit the other one. I haven't even started the other one. Usually when I finish a sock, the first thing I do is cast on the next one so that I don't fall into second sock syndrome. And I wouldn't say that I have fallen into second sock syndrome. I would just say that I have been busy and other things have been a little bit more interesting to me to knit. So I just didn't get, get to it yet. But this yarn is really fun. I love the colors. It is Knitterly Things. And so this is from Julia's Sock Yarn Club. And this is what it looks like in the skein, like in the cake, I should say. And it came with this little mini, which is that color green right back there. Um, yeah, so it's a speckly spring green mini, like brown orange speckles in there. It's really pretty. The color is from July 2021 and it's called Meadows Remix. And so this is her Remix Club. If you guys are interested in the Remix Club, you really have to pay attention to her site in, I wanna say December, because the signups start for January and her other club, the Vesper Sock Yarn Club, is quarterly. You can sign up every three months, but for this one, so far it's been just at the beginning of the calendar year so i would say look out for her club announcements she'll have the remix club open in december as well as her sock yarn club so there's two that i subscribe to so the pattern that i used for this sock yarn is my knitted heart vanilla sock this is by elizabeth suarez and you cast on it's it's cuff down so you cast on in like a two by two ribbing and then the ribbon continues down the sides of the sock, but the front and back are stuck in that. So it has just a little bit of ribbing that helps cinch in the sock, which is great for me because I have really skinny feet, really narrow feet. So this really helps the socks fit well to my foot. And I have knit this sock so many times. I actually, it's kind of my default pattern when I feel like casting on a sock but don't feel like looking for a pattern. This is the one that I always go to because it is super easy and I know it fits me really well. So that is my first whip. So I had a goal of finishing my modernist Cardi by my birthday and I didn't make that goal, but I did make some really, really significant progress on it because I have one sleeve done now. So this has been my brand ambassador project. I am a brand ambassador for Wonderland Yarns. So at any time, if you guys are interested in trying out any of their yarns or spinning fibers, you can use the code YARNVIP to get 15% off your order of most things on the site. I think they have some clubs that the code is not eligible for, but aside from that, you're pretty safe to use it on anything. So I am using Colorburst yarn, and this is their Cheshire Cat base, and it is number 19, Splashing Through Puddles. You guys have seen this project so much because I mean I started it I think last October um, and I've actually got some new projects with their yarn going on right now so um, this one is finally nearing the end but um, I have a sleeve I finally have a sleeve which makes me so happy you guys this sleeve took a really long time I don't know why it's just it was a lot of knitting still on the sleeve. This is a light fingering weight yarn. And I think it's about 
80 stitches around or no not 80 stitches around I don't remember something like that maybe 88 even but it was like 80 rows of ribbing once I did the decreases for the arm and it just this has been the never-ending cardigan of all cardigans but I am going to attempt to put this on I know it totally does not go with my outfit at all and it has not been blocked so it's a very oversized cardigan as you can see like my waist is here and it comes out from the body quite a bit so I am actually knitting the size large um, because there were five sizes to choose from usually I knit the size like the third size when I have choices um, and I just wanted to make sure because the pattern was written for a fingering weight yarn and I'm actually using a light fingering weight. So usually I would knit a size medium, but in this case I decided to just knit a size large because I wanted to maybe compensate for any difference that a lighter weight fingering might have in my gauge. I did not gauge swatch or anything because I like to live on the edge about that, but yeah. I I think, um, I don't know if I've ever checked my gauge. It's been so long ago since I started this that if I did, I just don't even remember. But I think that it is turning out perfectly. And of course it still has to be blocked and it is a super wash yarn, which means it will also grow. If I want it to grow a bunch, it can do that. <laughs> so yeah, so officially I have one sleeve done and the other one I have just done like until the first decrease so that's I just I just still need a sleeve and then blocking it weaving in ends and buttons and we are getting so close to this one finally being done I will have this cardigan done I am talking to you all of you I am promising you I will have this cardigan done before October I should see which date in October I cast this on last year and I should make it my mission to finish this within a year because it's been too long and it's been okay that it's been too long because it's been summer for a while but now that we're actually starting to get that fall weather that's stuck on my hairband now that it's actually starting to be fall I would like to actually be able to wear this right away because i think it's a really lightweight cardigan it's going to be really great for the chilly chilly fall evenings in september coming up i think we're only about two weeks away from like really starting to feel that chill in the air so so excited about that this will be the last episode that i am not wearing a knitted item i can feel it next week next week i am going to wear something hand knit again on the podcast and we will have that segment back yeah so um that is my modernist cardi i almost forgot the name of it so i ordered some buttons from got it wrapped around me i did order some buttons from katrinkles i ordered some of the cute little cat acrylic buttons because i don't really know i don't know it i don't really i don't really know where to get buttons do you guys have any good button sources resources i started looking up buttons online and it was just overwhelming i had no idea where to go and then the few sites that i tried had just like thousands of buttons and i don't know it just it was overwhelming so um i really don't want to pop into a yarn shop just to shop for buttons because it will never be just buttons and i really don't need any more yarn right now so yeah, so we'll see if the if the kitty cat acrylic buttons work well with this. Otherwise, I'll just, I'm probably not going to wear it buttoned up anyway, but I will put the buttons on just for aesthetic, I think. So, yeah, so that is my modernist Cardi. I want to have this done next episode. Maybe not blocked, but I want that other sleeve done. So I'm going to try to make that happen this weekend. Okay, moving on. You guys, I feel so out of practice with this podcast recording thing. I 
feel just awkward today. I don't know what it is. Um, I think it's just because it's been like three weeks at least, I think now. So yeah, I promise I will get back feeling comfortable again. I hear this from a lot of podcasters though, like when you haven't done it in a while, it just feels kind of awkward to get going again at first. So if I'm awkward today, I apologize. <laughs> I promise we will get back into the weekly recording and yeah. All right. So next up you guys is my souffle tea. No, it's not my souffle tea. <sighs> My lace and fade boxy. I got confused a second because the mohair that I am using for this is the same mohair that I used for my souffle tea. It's been a while. <laughs> oh my goodness. So last episode, I showed you my yarn chicken struggles and I think I'm not on camera anymore, but hopefully you guys can see this. Oh my gosh, I am really excited about this one. So let's see, there we go. So another very boxy sweater, as you know, as the name implies. So last time I was playing Yarn Chicken and I lost Yarn Chicken when I was on the very last half of the last row of the mohair. And so a couple of really kind knitters, two of you actually, that I found on Ravelry sent me your little bitty leftovers from the mohair and I received both of them and I didn't need both of them, but it's like really nice to know that I was gonna have the yarn that I needed to finish my sweater. So thank you both so much. I will put your names here. I am just, I'm so grateful. Um, but so I finished that like as soon as I got that yarn in the mail, I finished that up and then I went ahead and did the very last stripe of the body. And so I have bound off the body completely and now I need to pick up stitches for the collar and pick up stitches for the sleeves and then that's it. So I just, I've been focused on other projects and I, I finished the body and then I, I just set it aside because I really wanted to get the sleeve of my modernist Cardi done. Actually, I wanted to get both of those done, but I only got the one done. So, so that was why I set this down because I had given myself the deadline of my birthday and then last weekend I was like, oh my goodness, it's almost my birthday. I need to work on my modernist Cardi. And so, yeah, so then this one got put down but um, I would actually like to finish this one maybe even before the Modernist Cardi because I think it's in between seasons a little bit more than the cardigan is. The cardigan is more, that feels a little bit more fall and this just kind of feels a little bit more like end of summer, maybe because of the colors that I chose. So, so let's talk about the colors that I used for this. I'm going to, I'm going to take another picture of this. I don't think I took a picture since I finished the body, but when I get this out in the natural light is when you can best see the colors because I naturally dyed this yarn with mushrooms that I foraged. And the mushroom is called Cortinarius semi-sanguineus, semi-sanguineus. I actually don't really have any idea how to pronounce it but I know how to identify them, which is the most important thing. So it's this innocent looking little brown mushroom that has red gills under the cap and the stems are more yellow. So what I did for dyeing the yarn, I'll hold it this way so we can see all the colors together. So the part at the top that is more yellow is a combination of it being just the stems from the mushroom, so no cap. So I didn't use any of the red gill part. Um, and the lighter shades are also from it being like a couple of dye baths in. So for instance, this darkest one at the bottom was, I should try to see if you guys can see the variation in the color it is so pretty but that was done just with the caps 
from the mushrooms so I didn't use any of the stems at all and this was the initial dye bath so this was the darkest the darkest color that I got and then a subsequent dye bath I think what what you would call like the first to after bath the color is gonna get a lot weaker right so this one was like the after bath from this one and in the middle here this was one of the after baths as well but you can see there's a little bit of pink variation in there and i used a mixture of stems and caps i'm hoping that you guys can see that little bit of pink striping in there so this one i used both the caps the gills and the stems of the mushroom and so it has like both the yellow and the coral colors in there together so i was able to create this really nice fade with different parts of the mushroom and different stages of dye bath and when you see it in the natural light this the colors look so true and so beautiful and so as i said um the yarn I don't even remember which is the front this is the front so the yarn that I used for the mohair was left over from my souffle tea I needed to buy an extra skein to finish the ruffle on my souffle tea and so I thought that the color which I think is number 28 I don't know the name of the color but I think the number is 28 in the Lang lace and I just thought that that went so beautifully with the mushroom dyed yarn so it was like the perfect combination of using a yarn that i had left over from another project and coordinating with my special yarn that i hand dyed figured that this was just it was the perfect project to really show off the different colors that i was able to get with the fade so yeah i am really excited to get back to this one just put the collar on it and a couple of sleeves and then i think this is gonna be a nice transition piece so i'm gonna try to finish this one up hopefully by the next podcast too i think i might be able to get that done this weekend so those are are those all of my whips it's not all of my whips um those are all of my garments that I am currently knitting. I have um, I have a couple other things that I can show you too. So hang on one second. So I mentioned that I received some more yarn in the mail from Wonderland Yarns, and I actually received it over the holiday weekend and so i saved it to open up on my birthday so it was like getting a birthday present the timing of this package was amazing i had not received yarn from them for so long i mean almost 11 months now because i have been taking so long with my modernist cardi and so they sent me some more yarn so that i could i asked for some I decided on some quicker projects because I usually pick these big sweaters and it just it takes me so long to do so I had them send me yarn for two small projects and one of them I have already started and it is a shawl and it is called the going somewhere shawl and I've got these two yarns that I'm knitting it out of so it is a, it's a sport weight shawl and it uses two different yarn bases. So the Blossoms, this one is, you can get these, um, you can get the colorways on pretty much any base that you want. What they do is they do dyed to order for most things. So you can choose your base. So if you like a certain colorway that you see but you don't want the same base, you can most likely get that on one of their other yarn bases so keep that in mind um, the blossoms comes in a few different choices this is their sport weight and this is a beautiful long slow colorway uh, fade from like a very light green to a darker brown and this colorway is called what is this one called? Bronze Amaranth. So that colorway there, it is number 17. 
and this is the Mad Hatter Sport Weight Base. And this shawl pattern combines one of these cakes with two skeins of their unicorn base. So their unicorn base, this one is got a shimmer to it. It is so beautiful. Um, so unicorn is a combination of 63% silk, 23% kid mohair, 11% nylon, 3% lurex, and a bit of magic. So it is just so, so pretty, and it is so soft, and I am loving the way it is knitting up. This color is in their Magical Menagerie collection, and it is number 242, Frolic. and so let me show you how this is knitting up so far so yeah so these are the two colors together I'm not too far in but this was my birthday cast on and this is how far I have gotten so far so it's really cool the texture of the you start with the main color yarn and this is gonna be like a V a v-shaped shawl I'll insert a picture because it this doesn't look it kind of looks like a bikini bottom right now but that's not what it is so the main color will has um, the knit side facing out and then the contrast color is in the reverse stockinette so it's got the pearl bump side facing out and so on the one side you've got this uh, double center decrease that happens in the center to give it that seam look and then on the other side it's just the reverse you've got the knit side of the unicorn showing and the pearl side of the blossoms showing and so the main color is going to be the one that changes color as the shawl grows so i'm not that far into it but I'm really loving it so far. It is a super easy pattern to memorize and it's very relaxing to knit. So it's it's like stockinette, but with a little bit of interest because you've got the increases on either end of the shawl to make it grow, plus the center decrease. And there's, um, there's some yarn overs. It's hard to see right now, but there's like a little cute little edging there with some yarn overs there we go you can see it better there so there's like enough little interesting things going on but it is it's very mindless so basically like I knit the first two sections right away and then I've knit the next color one like another night and then last night I just did this green so I'm kind of just working like one stripe at a time on this and I'm not I don't know if I'll be able to keep that going as like the shawl width grows but for right now that's working out really well to just do one one color section and then put it away and work on something else and that's what I've been doing so I'm really excited about that and the next thing that I got from Wonderland Yarns, I saw, actually both of these projects I saw in their newsletter when they came out, and that was what got me interested in knitting them. But they have a sock club also. They have like different knitting kits that you can get, and I think it's like an ongoing sock club maybe. And this pattern is called Fairy Ring Sock Set. And this is on their Mary Ann base. So there's, this is a lot of yards. Um, it is 590 yards altogether. That is a lot of yards. And that's fingering weight. And it is, so it's five ounces. And it's 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon. And so when I saw this pattern, I knew that I had to knit it right away because it's got this little fairy ring circle of mushrooms as the little color work. So I will insert a picture. And I just, with all the natural dyeing that I've been doing with mushrooms, these socks 
absolutely had to happen. I must have these socks. So I haven't cast these on yet, but I did wind the yarn already. And so the main color is this beautiful pinkish purple variegated yarn. And then it comes with, for the color work, this kind of bluish grayish with, with speckles in there. So let's see if I can get this one to focus a little bit more. I think next on my list of things to get needs to be a better camera because my phone only can do so much, but it's so beautiful. And so this is going to be my next pair of socks. And I'm excited because I have never knit color work socks before. I don't think I've done textured socks. I've done, I've done cabled socks and I've done self striping socks, but I have never actually done a color work on a pair of socks. So I'm really excited about that. So that was my like happy mail that the time, it just, it wasn't for my birthday. It just that that's when it happened to arrive. So that was a really fun thing to open on my birthday was this plus the other yarn for the shawl. Got one other project that I've been knitting on just a little bit here and there. And this is completely different for me. And that is a dishcloth. And I'm actually knitting this on straight needles, which is also not usual for me, but um, I will spread it out. So I don't remember what the pattern is called. I will insert that on the screen and also have it linked below. But um, we moved into a new apartment and we didn't really have any dishcloths. We have some, but they're not really absorbing water so well. Like they don't really do a good job drying dishes, which is actually kind of important for us now because we don't have a dishwasher here and we have very limited counter space. So there's like not a lot of dishes that can just be out like drying at once. So we really want to kind of wash them and get them dry and so rather than buy a whole bunch of dishcloths, I bought some yarn. I used it as, as an excuse to do a little bit of yarn shopping. We've got a Joann's right across the street from us, right across the highway. And so I just went over there and I got some, um, what is it called? Sugar, sugar and cream. I don't know where my label is right now, but it is sugar and cream. And it's one of these like super sized skeins. So it was great because you don't have to wind it or anything. It is just all ready to go in a ball. And so I've just, it's like a eight round pattern repeat. So pretty much I've just been doing like after I finish one of the stripes on the shawl, I'll pick this up and I'll just do like the next eight rounds repeat. I am in no hurry to get this done. The pattern is really easy to memorize. I don't love working with this cotton. It's pretty stiff, but it's perfect for dishcloths. And I know that there are softer cottons that you can get out there, but the convenience of just being able to go across the street and pick up a bunch of sugar and cream is what I did. So I'll just show you a couple of the other colors that I got. Um, I got, I bought so I don't know what that one is called because I don't have the label right here but this one here is called teal and so I just got a bunch of colors that we're gonna match kind of our kitchen here so I got that one I got this one which is Jade mist and I got this lighter one which is called beach glass. So I've got these, I've got like this um, floor mat and this oven mitt set that has kind of all of these colors plus the pink in it. Um, and then I also got these two like denim -y colors. This is I think indigo. And then I got this lighter one, blue jeans. So indigo and blue jeans. So just kind of lots of blues and greens going on, plus the pink. And then I also got um, a variegated that kind of had all of those colors together. So the variegated is kelp, 
and this one is Coral Seas Ombre. So, you know, I'm not gonna be knitting these up super quickly, but probably just kind of keep them going so that we just have some dishcloths around here. I also picked up um, And I also picked up a few things to make little like washcloth scrubby things for Owen for his baths because I realized that I didn't buy any washcloths. Just, I don't know, I don't have any washcloths. I could get washcloths or I could make washcloths. So um, yeah, I haven't started knitting these yet, but this one is called Papaya and this is their Scrub Off Sugars and Cream. So it's got a little texture to that. And then this one is called Sea Glass, again. And so it's really pretty. And then this one is called Daisy. And so I just, I just picked up a few of those. I thought I might make him, there's a pattern on the label for like a scrubby bath mitt, I think. So maybe I'll knit those for him because I'm trying to kind of get him to do his own cleaning now of himself in the shower. I know that sounds so weird to say, but he is, he's seven and a half and I'm, you know, so I'm trying to get him there because I think he's, he's old enough to do it all himself. He doesn't do the best job yet cleaning himself. So I'm still helping because if I don't, he won't really like get his hair washed or his body washed or anything. He'll just play in the water and splash and make a huge mess. But yeah, so that went in a direction I didn't think it was going to go in. But yeah, so dishcloths and that, I guess we can segue into acquisitions because that was some acquisitions and I have just one more thing for acquisitions. So let's officially say that we're doing acquisitions and I will go grab the other yarn. So yesterday my Knitterly Things Sock Yarn Club arrived in the mail. So I picked that up. The colors are so good this month. I'm so excited. All right, so her regular Ves Vesper Sock Yarn Club. This is August, 2022. It is called Cozy Season. I think this is my favorite. It is so pretty. So it's got, it's on her glitterful base. So you can choose what base you want. She's got four different options or you can just let her surprise you. And that's what I do is I just let her surprise me because I've got I've got all different bases of hers. It's all great and I don't have a preference, but you can see that shimmer there. I think the indoor light is actually pretty good for the shimmer. So those colors are so pretty. So that's really fun. And then the other one, which is also really pretty, this is her Remix Club. Again, this is the one where you have to just get on it at the start of the year or the very end, like December. And this August 2022, her Remix Club color is called Afterglow Remix. And those are also, those are also fantastic colors. I really, really, really like them. I love the shade of purple in here. And then that shade of green is, it's really murky. And then the orange and blue are just, are nice and bright. So both of these are huge winners for me. And that is all the, um, that is all the yarn I got. I did acquire some publications as well, but I have not had a time to, time to flip through them yet. Like I finally got my hands on the 10th anniversary issue of Pom Pom magazine. And I know that the, the next issue is already, is already out for pre-orders and everything. But so I'm kind of an issue behind on that, but they had it at my Barnes and Noble. And so I picked that up just I think last week and I'm hoping to be able to flip through that soon um, and I also picked up like the Vogue knitting and the interweave knits fall issues of the magazine so so I have a few new publications that I will be just flipping through probably in this coming week I just haven't had time to sit down um, and I think that that's mostly it I have a couple well, I have spinning, so I am going to quickly do my spinning segment, but um, let's go into Knitworthy for a quick, for a quick moment, just really super quick. So out of the blue last weekend, 
Owen decided that he wanted to learn how to knit. First he said, I want to know how to crochet. And then he said he wanted to learn how to knit. So I was like, well, you might have better success with crochet. I just know him and his attention span right now is not, not very much. So that was why I was thinking crochet. But he wanted to start with trying to learn how to knit. And he thought that was pretty complicated and we did not get that far with the knitting. So then we switched over to crochet. I picked up a crochet hook for him especially because the ones that I have are just like those metal ones that are really uncomfortable. So I got him one that would be more comfortable for his hand and it was also white and orange. I forget the brand. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up and show you next time. Um, and he's not home right now, so I'm just gonna tell you really quickly. But he, we, I taught him how to do chain stitch, which is the only thing that I know. I have done a little bit more crochet than just chain stitch, but it was so many years ago. I mean, we're talking like 15 years ago, I think. I knit a little stuffed animal, or I crocheted a stuffed animal for my niece, and she is 15. So this was when she was not yet born. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much the last time I did any crochet was when I crocheted a stuffed animal for my niece. And, but I, I do occasionally have to chain stitch if I'm doing like a provisional cast on with knitting or something. So I said, you know, I can teach you how to chain stitch and then we can, we can learn crochet together slowly. And so he made these, well, we kind of made them together. So we've got just like two little chain stitch strips and Owen is so proud of these. Um, I had Bryce take some pictures of us, so I don't know if they're any good or not. Um, so we'll see, I will, I will see if he has a picture that I can insert. But basically, I let him, I showed him the motion of of grabbing the yarn and pulling it through the loops, but I held the tension of the yarn for him. So he was like sucking, his, he still sucks his thumb. We're trying to, to break that habit, but. It was a noisy truck. It was just the funniest thing, cause he's like tired and focused. He's like sucking his thumb with one hand and then like <laughs> hooking with his other hand but I was, I was tensioning the yarn for him and he was just really, really proud. And so, I don't know, maybe we will start to have a little crochet segment on here because of Owen. So he's totally knit worthy, but now he might have his own little crochet segment. I don't know. So it's, I'm just so proud that he is so proud and I'm excited that he wants to have anything to do with fiber arts right now because he's usually just mad that I knit all the time and just wants me to sit there and watch him do things. And I'm like, I can knit while I watch you do these things, which is more satisfying for me. So yeah, so we've got these. And then let's go into spinning. I have to do a really quick with the spinning though because I do have to get him from the bus stop pretty soon. So spinning will be the last segment for today. So I have two spinning projects to update you guys on this week. Or one of them is an update, one of them is a brand new spinning project. The first one is in this gold little bag and I spun it using this very lightweight drop spindle, which I have no idea who made it or where I got it from, something at a fiber festival. But this was the Eerie, Eri, E-R-I, I think, silk from the June or July Paradise Fibers package. Um, June, I wanna say it was June. And so I spun all of the silk and it's beautiful. Um, it is pretty thin and I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. There were some other fibers in the fiber of the month package that 
might be nice to either apply together with it or maybe I use them all together in the same project and I just I don't know if I want to apply this if I want to apply this with itself or if I want to apply it yet with one of the other fibers that came in the bag so right now I'm just leaving this as singles but it is super super soft and yeah it wasn't that hard to spin it does take a little bit of time to get used to spinning the silk but I had just been spinning some kind of bamboo fiber before that so it was very similar um so I was already in the hang of it but it is it's really slippery so you have to spin it on the fold which is like when you take the fiber and fold it in half and then pull from the middle so that was the first project and then I got sent some beautiful fiber from I think her name is Arlene over at Wild Wool Farm in Washington State and she asked me if um, if I could do like an unboxing for her and if I wanted to sample some of her fiber and of course I said yes so um, I did film an unboxing video which I have not released yet I think what I'm going to do is show like make just like one longer video from like kind of start to finish of the process of spinning it and then hopefully applying it and maybe even knitting it into a, a finished product um yeah because i wanted to have more than just like a two minute video right to show but this she sent me two different colors of this beautiful fiber so sorry for the crinkle okay so all right it's wild wolf farm and so she sent this little this little business card there and she's a small business out in washington state and these fibers are gorgeous so she sent me a merino coriadale blend and she calls these her wild bouquet bats now i have never spun from a bat before so it's not too much different really from a braid but she sent me these two beautiful colors i mean look at how beautiful you guys know based on my modernist cardi that these are they're like my favorite colors ever in the whole world especially this purple um so i didn't start spinning the purple yet but i did i have like almost an entire spindle full of this blue and so a bat like instead of like a braid i think what she did was probably on a drum carter or a blending board was probably a drum carter i'm sure she has a drum carter um you know you can blend the fibers together into kind of like a big sheet and what's really really cool about this is that all of the color variation comes from the blending so the wool is dyed and then the blending of the colors hap happens on the drum carter or the blending board together and so this it kind of reminds me in like the way that like a harrisville yarns is because they they do the blending of the colors in the spinning process not after the yarn so a lot of the times like the yarn will be spun first and then after it's all spun the dye will be applied um and so I think that what she did was she dyed different fibers separately and then blended the different colors together. That's what I think. Um, and then, so you can see, like, there's like, oh, it's so beautiful. This one especially, so pretty. So I started spinning the blue and I decided to try to spin it a little thicker than I normally do. It is so, so pretty. Oh my goodness. I don't know. We can really focus on that. It is so pretty. Um, I'm using this drop spindle, which is my, my favorite. It's like a medium weight drop spindle. I can usually spin pretty thin with this one, but I'm purposefully spinning a little bit thicker 
than I normally try to. And then I'm definitely gonna apply it either with itself in one color or I haven't decided if I want to apply the blue with the purple yet. Probably what I'm gonna do is apply it with itself when it's all done and then use the two together in a color work project, I think. So we'll see how much yarn I end up with when I'm done. Um, I mean, they would be beautiful together in a blue and purple yarn, but it might also be really beautiful in color work. So I don't know, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna spin a single first and then I'll spin these as singles as well. And then I'm gonna decide. But I am so excited about this. I have also never spun Coriadale before. So it's a, it's a blend between Merino and Coriadale. And I've spun Merino quite a bit. And it's much, um, much softer, much more, I don't wanna say slippery because Merino's not really slippery, but the Coriadale in here is definitely really rustic. And I love that so much. Um, and there's no like nylon or anything in here. So this is gonna be perfect. Like if I wanted to use this for a project that I was gonna be steaking, which I've also never done, this would be a beautiful yarn to use for that type of, that type of project, like a steaking project, because it's really sticky. So I'm just really excited and um, I'm so excited about this. It is so beautiful. I love the texture of the fiber. I love how rustic it is. And so this is my current spinning project and I'm just gonna pretty much keep going with this one until until it's done because I'm, I'm so excited about it. Um, I'm really curious after I get done with this, I'm probably gonna go back to her site and buy more because I just the, I love the Coriadel so much. I don't know what other um, what other breeds of sheep she has. I haven't really investigated that too much yet. So there are questions that I need to ask Arlene and find out more about her farm. But it was so generous of her to send this to me to try and I'm absolutely really, really loving it. So that is what I have so far for spinning. So that is everything I have to share with you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really am glad to see all the new subscribers that are coming to my channel. So I promise I will be recording regular content again starting now. So next week I should also have an episode coming out. I'm hoping to finish a lot of these projects or at least make some much more progress on them before I record again next week. So thank you guys so much for watching. It is time for me to go get Owen from the bus stop and take him off to theater. He's got auditions today. They are doing Annie Jr. So yeah, lots going on. It's an exciting time. All right, thank you guys so much. Stay well, bye-bye.